Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, what I'm going to be showing you how to use is a vernier temperature probe, which you'll probably be using for several experiments throughout the year. So uh, if you ever need to go back and watch this video, just make sure that you do that. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is go to the Google Chrome Web Store on your Chromebook. And so you can just type Google Chrome Web Store into, you know, Google, or you, if you have the icon, you can just use that. But you're going to want to search for graphical analysis. And the reason why we're searching for that is because the piece of software that we're going to be installing is called Vernier Graphical Analysis. And so uh, when I click on that, it says launch app. But because you maybe haven't downloaded this before, it might say add to Chrome. So make sure that you add it to Chrome uh, first and then launch it. Okay. And when you do that, it might take a little bit longer on a Chromebook. But um, graphical analysis has a couple of different settings first. And don't click on anything until you've plugged in your temperature probe to your Chromebook. And so you'll have two parts, the GoLink cable gets plugged directly into the USB port of your Chromebook. And then the temperature probe, um, which looks a little different than this, but the temperature probe um, has a little white, almost like a ethernet cable port that you plug into the um, GoLink cable. When you do that, you should have a green light or something should light up on the GoLink cable to tell you that it's actually working correctly. And now that you've done that, uh, when you click launch app, it should give you uh, sensor data collection, which will make sense. Okay, so if we read what these all say, it says sensor data collection, collect data from a Vernier sensor through the USB, which is what we want. Okay, so when you click on that, um, it'll give you this big screen. And so uh, here's what you're going to want to do and what you're going to want to be able to manipulate whenever you're doing an experiment. The first thing is you want to name it. So where it says experiment three up here, you can rename that anything. So let's pretend like we're making a heating curve or something. So I'll rename this heating curve. And then down here at the bottom, you'll see a couple of different icons. The first is graph options, and then you'll see mode, time-based, rate, two samples a second. So uh, if you click on that, it'll let you change the time unit at the top. So you can change it to milliseconds or seconds or minutes or hours. And so we're gonna wanna keep it on seconds. Uh, and then right here is a big thing that you're probably always going to want to select. So it says end collection after 180 seconds. Uh, if you want to have longer than 180 seconds for your data collection, you're going to want to hit manually instead so that it'll do it forever. So as long as you are collecting data, it'll keep doing it okay, until you specifically tell it to stop. So I'm just going to click done. And then um, we can start to use the settings up here where it says view. Okay, now view one graph, two graph, three graph, the most, well, in this case, one graph is the only one that really makes sense. I mean, we're just measuring temperature. We're not measuring multiple things. Uh, if you click on table, though, it'll give you the time and temperature. Okay, so every half second, it'll take a sample and it'll give you the time and the temperature. Uh, other than that, if you go to meters, it's giving you in real time the temperature. So right now I'm holding on to the temperature probe. So um, it's going up dramatically. And it also gives you that same piece of information down here at the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to let go now. Um, and then if you do graph and table, it gives you the graph and also the table data. So you might want to use that if you want to like, you know, actually use the data and see the graph at the same time. Now, all you have to do, this is super easy, is make sure your temperature probe is in whatever you want your sample to be, and then just click on collect. And what you'll see instantly forming is the graph and the data. And so I'm going to hold on to it again. And so we'll see the temperature increase. And it should flatline near 35 or 37 or something, since I probably don't have a fever. But again, you can always change between your views. So if you just want the graph, you can do that. You can drag the time down here to follow the line and follow the graph. Okay. So you can kind of move this around and edit it a little bit. Same thing with the temperature. Okay. You can actually move the temperature around. Okay. So you can, oh, wait, I don't want to go in the negative, but you can go up or down too to kind of get a dynamic view by just dragging it up or down. Okay. And um, let's go to graph and table. And then uh, at any point, you can just click stop, and it'll stop the data collection and automatically kind of format your graph for you. 
Okay. And then the nice thing is at any point you can click export once you've stopped your data collection and you can download an image directly to your Chromebook that you can use and insert into a lab of your choice. Okay. And so that's pretty much all the information that you need to know. So you can change uh, the time down here. Okay. Um, you can always set it to manual. Okay, so that um, it goes on forever. Um, otherwise, it will stop at 180 seconds and it won't go further than that. Okay, you can always get um, a view of the graph and table or the meter itself or just the table data or one graph. If you click on two graphs, it'll give you a blank graph underneath, so it's not very cool looking. Uh, you can swap the axes if you had to but um, that's not really that useful. Oh, and I guess I almost forgot. Graph options is also kind of cool. You can give this a title. So for this, let's say um, practice heating curve. Um, you can have it change this to points instead of a line. And then here you can set the horizontal range and um, the vertical range as well. So if you want that to be zero, you can you know kind of move it all the way down to zero. Uh, if you try typing numbers in here, sometimes it goes a little crazy. So you might want to like you know play around with that before you actually you know do something that might make your graph look even weirder. Uh, but anyway, that gives you an introduction to how you'd be able to utilize this. And so I hope that you find this useful. And if you ever have any questions, obviously just ask. But this video does give you pretty much everything you need to know about collecting data using a vernier temperature probe. So I hope you found that useful.